personality and broadcaster Ollie London. Later this year, Ollie will be releasing his latest book, Gender Madness, One Man's Devastating Struggle with Woke Ideology and His Battle to Protect Children. Ollie, welcome to the studio again. I know it's been a while. Thank you for coming in. It's been a while, yes. Yeah, nice to see you. What is your book going to be about? Um, so Gender Madness is really looking at all of the societal issues we have right now with children being addicted to social media, with children being influenced by what the algorithms promote. So that includes a lot of gender ideology, children being confused about becoming non-binary or trans. And you know, we see on, on TikTok, for instance, you see kids... Um, sharing their double mastectomy stories and how to inject hormones. And I think that's very harmful. So part of that's discussing that. Part of it's discussing how school systems have been infiltrated and also how faith can help um, can help change your life. Because, you know, I've been through a crazy identity crisis. I talk about that a lot in the book and how to overcome their struggles. So I want this book to motivate people that may be questioning their identity and just tell them, look, you are good enough as it is, you know, I'd be happy with the way God made you. I love that because last time we had you on, we talked about your faith journey and how mm. you, I mean, you originally transitioned into a K-pop artist, <laughs> and then, yes. then you wanted to become like a Barbie, and then you detransitioned into a Ken. And yes. Your faith kind of influenced you in your detransition, am I right? Yes, you know, I needed something in my life to guide me because I was, you know, struggling with all these crazy different identities, and I needed some guidance. I needed to be grounded. I needed to, needed to get back to the real me. So part of this journey with my faith was trying to get back to the old me, you know, when I was younger, going through all those repressed memories. I used to go to church as a kid, and I remember fondly, you know, Easter egg and spoon races with the church, uh, Chris Kringle sessions and Carol sessions and you know, really positive memories. So that helped me just have some purpose in life. And you know, the thing about um, faith and Christianity, it's about helping others. So I've used, you know, my own experience to try and help parents, women, kids and help, you know, come up with a solution for all of these gender identity debates. The reason I like your story so much is because I think a lot of people can relate to it. A lot of mm. people are struggling to find their true self or their true identity. And I think they don't realize that in that search, you can never be fulfilled because there's always something else. And actually, mm. the search is for God. The search is for Christ. And once you direct the search away from yourself, then you find contentment, then you find fulfillment. Exactly. You know, I kind of wish I could have found God a lot earlier in my life. But, you know, we all have different points in our life where we may find faith, we may have it from birth. And um, I think it's an important moment. I think in modern society, you know, so many young people aren't connecting with God and Jesus. They're not going to church. They're all day on TikTok and they're not looking at that. And I think it can really help people just an hour a day, you know, prayer, going to worship and having that sense of kind of, I have a duty to make this world a better place. I should be helping people. And I also have a duty to um, love myself and those around me. Oh, man. Oli, there, there's so many stories I want to talk to you about with you. Um, one of them is this crazy situation in Canada where we have a man who has transitioned into a woman um, and it didn't go as intended. Uh, he's having a lot of pain in his uh, neo-vagina, as mm -hmm. they call it. Excuse me, that's what the, the term they use. And he's opted to end his life, as they do in Canada with their... Um, medical euthanasia, and they've de declined him at the moment, saying mm -hmm. that maybe we'll look at it in the future. Now, this shows, this shows to me, I mean, you can give me your thoughts on this, but this shows to me that young people, vulnerable people, are being manipulated into thinking that the way to find happiness is to change their bodies and mutilate their bodies, and they're being manipulated by the, the society and the, the norms around them. And this is leading to people wanting to end their lives. Absolutely. Well, originally when Kanaja introduced this law in 2016, it was for end of life, you know, for people that had terminal illness and they wanted to die with dignity. And then, you know, by 2021, you had 10,000 Canadians, around 3.3% of the deaths that year year whereby assisted suicide but now what's happened is um, a couple of years ago they introduced a mental health clause to assisted uh, suicide which is called made maid in canada and they're now saying people that have mental health struggles can do this so you know most people with gender identity struggles and that transition they do struggle with their mental health so the fact that this person they had a vaginoplasty surgery in 2009 they've said that they've lived with incredible pain and discomfort that is so excruciating since then and they've actually applied for assisted suicide. And I think that's heartbreaking because that person has been betrayed by the doctors that did that procedure to them in the first place. And now, while their request has been rejected now, it could well, you know, as Canada becomes more and more woke uh, with Justin Trudeau, it could include, you know, people that, you know, transition and they're struggling with their identity. And, you know, any young person, and so many young people have mental health, but if they really cared about, you know, people's lives and stuff, they would invest in mental health support.
I absolutely agree. I mean, the, the headline is the most bizarre headline I've read in a while. Trans Indigenous Can Canadian slams doctors for denying her euthanasia request, saying death would be better than her constant pain from a surgically built vagina. I mean, we, we, the, this is a cry for help, isn't it? We have to stop this mutilation because this is becoming torture. Mm. And whilst activists talk of a trans genocide that doesn't exist, this could actually lead to a trans genocide if people who go through these operations realise that they're unhappy and in pain want to end their lives. It's a Heartbreaking, and you know, many young people do struggle with mental health in this day and age. So, if you're giving them an option to end their life, you know, a lot of people are going to do it. And some people that have applied to be um, applied to assisted suicide in Canada, they've said because they struggle with money, they don't have enough money for housing and stuff, and that's one of the reasons why they want to end their life. You know, they can't afford certain things, healthcare, and you know, even food in some cases. And I think, you know, why aren't we helping these people and you know, treating these people with mental health support instead of telling them that oh, you have an option to die? That is not a resort for any human to have to go through. I just think it's truly tragic. Ollie, you have to keep speaking your story because you've been through the transition. You've seen both sides of this, and you're absolutely right. We have to support people, help mm -hmm. them, not affirm them, and not mutilate their bodies. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank that you. Ollie London, thank you.